Uh, as you can see, this is my workbench. And really, I've been working small lately, so I work a lot at this. Um, but when, we saw, when I saw something big, obviously I clear it off. But it's the right height, and I don't know, it's just a nice table. So it's what we call the mighty Tanowitz. And I will start it up. The problem is it's going to run for fucking ever. But anyway, listen to this. Beautiful. Well, this thing would run. This thing would run forever if I didn't do yeah. that. So, yeah. Um, but it's and for all you that have a bit, this is this is really a good machine. I mean, it really is an amazing machine. It's I found out when when I put brakes in it one time, I found I phoned Tanowitz, and I said, you know, I need brakes, and I said, do you make the brakes to carry the brake shoes. The guy says, yeah. I says, well, I think it's kind of old. He says, what's the serial number on it? So I gave him the serial number, and he takes a minute, and he says, oh, your saw is made in 1927. And they still make, they sent the brakes out, and they fit perfect. I mean, they still make the same brakes. But what's important, folks, and I'm sure everybody knows this, but some of you might not, is 90 degrees, you know, obviously. Right. Obviously 90 degrees. But the other important one is 90 degrees on the back. Mm -hmm. So you can saw into a corner without over sawing. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I sure Which do. Which is a real drag. So just remember to tune your saw so it's 90 degrees on the back side too. Very important. But I can get 18 inches under this thing. And I use a three tooth skip. So everything, I resaw with this. I think we mentioned the Tanowitz is probably my most used tool in here or favorite tool because I'm working again smaller. This has got to be the second. And this is, I might mention, I paid $100 for the Tanowitz saw. Oh no. Wow. Yeah. It was, there's a truck factory out in San Leandro, Peterbilt. Yeah. And I guess they got another band saw and they had this out in the yard and a friend of mine who goes by there all the time, Ronnie, Ron Terraza said, hey, there's a, got a big bandsaw out there. I said, shit, so we went out, got a hold of some guy, he says, yeah, what do you want for it? Oh, 100 bucks, okay. Oh no, you have to send in an invoice and a check, it's just gotta go through there. So I did, we went out, picked it up. Okay. This, I paid 125 for this. This oh, was gonna no. be scrap metal, you know? I mean, <clears throat> that's, probably 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah, but. Nobody wanted this big shit, especially three phase, okay? So this is, this is an amazing. These are amazing, what you yeah. can do with them. Now this is gonna take a while for it to, but it won't be terribly up. That's why I say they just, now that'll sand, no, it's, there's enough inertia here. Now we, you know, we're gonna go have to get a drink and when we're through, this'll stop. That's right. But can All you- All the people I know just turn it on for, for five or six seconds, and then turn it off and just let it come. They're cheap, they don't wanna spend the electricity. But I think uh, the, I think can you hear us of, over this? That's a kind of nice background. It's woody yeah. as hell, I, right? I think they're scared of it is what I think. Who, me? No, the people who oh, turn yeah. it off before it gets to full speed. Well, I notice sanding certain things, like I've been sanding a lot of this uh, large uh, PVC tubing. Right. And the circular sander doesn't want to be sanding one way Not on one side and one. coming up the other. Uh -huh. And that's when I do just barely start it and sand. And then I, it gets slow, and then I start it a little bit again. So, yeah. yeah, so you do oh, yeah no, you it. Do that. Oh yeah, it, it's, um, but 
I use this, I, you know, the bandsaw, I cut brass, copper, aluminum, you know, big thick aluminum if I want to. You got to get it balanced, you know, but once it's balanced, but it's, damn, Fay and Egan, boy, and, you know, I like cast iron machinery, so. This was 125 bucks. Again, it was going to just be oh, scrap no. seal. Yeah, I painted it. Or did I? Yeah, I think I did. I, no, I didn't. That's the way it was. And this was a contractor saw. And what would happen, they'd leave them on the job, and the kids would come and steal the ball bearings. But but this is a really good saw. I've got yeah. a 12, a 12 inch or 10 inch over there. This one's used all the time, but perfectly 90 degrees. You roll it in and out, and you can cut good four inches, and it'll cut anything you can put under there. So I'm going to fire it. Now that'll take a while, too. Stop, stop it. Okay, we got noise, right? More noise and then right. Are we ready for the for the 30 inch Oliver joiner? This is not gonna bounce into the blades, is We it? hope not. <laughs> ready? Fire! Just, just running. That'll run forever. And when you get one of these, you get a lot of friends. It's like having a swimming pool. Oh, hey, Gary can... <laughs> yeah, that, no, this is my third favorite. Uh, this is just used a lot. It's typical, I think, modern tool. High speed, sharp. This is low speed, dull, but it'll do a lot. All these big things. They're, they just rely on grunt. This thing here, high RPM and sharp. When, they get, when it gets dull, it's not worth a crap, but sharp. And I know this is not my idea. Somebody else has done this. But for those of you who haven't, the, this bed is just bullshit, OK? So I, this is waxed. This is that uh, pre-finished. Uh, Melamine. Melamine. And it throws this off, but I never read that anyway, you know. And you can, then there's no snipe, no hang up or anything. And with this, I can, I can mill down to easy a 16th, providing the wood doesn't catch the wrong grain and shatter all to pieces. So this is a handy, and it's used a lot, you know. So, yeah. And, and we are talking wood stuff here, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So... The uh, big planer, <clears throat> it's really nice, but I wish it had the automatic raising and lowering. Really? Because, oh, God, to raise and lower this thing is, uh, it's getting beyond me now. I've got, I've got one of these, but I found a Teflon spray that I can put on, yeah. on the... It's just so heavy, everything's so heavy, heavy, and it's so old, but it does have a sharpener on it. Yeah. Which really, is, yeah, shot. that's really handy. So anyway, it's just, um, it's a nice, it's good to have, but like I say, I don't use it anymore. It has been used a lot in the past. So, um, and well, here's a, roll that out, Al. This is, I just, his name just went out of my head. Well, uh, what's his name? It's Ernie Conover. Conover, yeah. Did he make it? Did yeah, he it? yeah, he had this made. He came out here to do um, to do a show, uh, some sort of furniture uh, machinery show in Frisco, uh -huh. and he shipped this out. And he's in Ohio or somewhere, right, right. Pennsylvania, whatever it is. And he came over. We, you know, we knew each other, and he came over. And I think I saw this in a truck before he got over there. And I thought, oh yeah, it's really nice. So he's going to, well, long story short, 
This was a, dis a s display model, right. you know, which he didn't sell there. So he came back here. We got to talking, and and he I, he said six. I said, yeah. I said, can I give you gold? You know, and I had to, at that time I had Krugerrands, a bunch of Krugerrands. He says, yeah. What are they worth? And we looked it up. They were worth at that time like two hundred and some odd dollars an ounce. So I gave him eight, eight of these, and he was happy, I was happy, and I ended up with this. Uh, then gold went down for a while, and then it went up, you know, as it does. But this is, a, this is really a beautifully made machine. I mean, it's, it's never failed me. It's, here's, here's a Japanese thing. Green they've got for off, red for off. <laughs> Stout. It is oh, it's stout as shit. You can do big stuff in, with this. Which, which, and it's got segmented right. grousers. So it's shit. It's a beautiful fucking machine. God damn, it's getting old as a drag. You want to? Here, I'll push and you guide. You pull. I totally buggered this finger for the third time. I did it once on. Once in Australia, once on the router, and then with that, uh, what's my saw, what make is that? Power. Powermatic. Powermatic. Powermatic, which was here. And Allison told her mother, and Allison's mother bought her a saw stop. <laughs> really? Yeah, so we have a saw stop now. And Allison's, I have, I've never tripped it. Allison's tripped it about four times. Oh, Sawing mylar and shit, you can't, you know, you've yeah, got to yeah. be, so there's the wall of shame. If you can turn the camera around, there, there's a couple blades with the, the gizmo. And it's an amazing. Yeah. I met the guy and spent quite a bit of time with him. Then I met him when I was up in Oregon at my cousin's. He lived right down the road. Steve somebody. But um, yeah, he sent me that blade, didn't he? Is it signed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Steve, 06. Yeah. Oh no, all of us though, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is the group photo. Yeah. There you go. See? All right. Squirkin work. So that, Squirkin where did that come from? Friend of mine made a piece of sculpture called Squirkin Wurtz. Wurtz. And when I did started the roach clip thing, I thought, Squirkin works. So we were Squirkin workers for quite a while. Corporate shit and all that. This was this was way back in the beginning. This was down at Fifth Avenue. In Oakland here, when that was sounds like a bank address nowadays, one fifth Avenue. No, but Avenue. one fifth. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's that was many. Yeah. <laughs>